Hi, this is Jane from SafeNet AT. In this video, I'm going to be integrating an HPE StoreEver MSL4048 tape library with SafeNet AT's Key Secure for Government KMIP compliant key manager. On the Security tab, under Local CAs, you can see I've created an integration CA. It is a self-signed local CA that will act as the root of trust for the integration. And on the Trusted CA list page, I have added the Integration CA as a Trusted Certificate Authority in the default Trusted CA list. I also created a TLS Server Certificate called KMIP Server Cert 1 that was signed by the local CA, and it will be bound to the KMIP Key Server as its certificate. On the Device tab, I created a KMIP key server. It's listening on port 5696, and you can see the TLS server certificate is bound to it. In the Properties tab, in the Authentication settings, it is set for Client Certificate Authentication and Username Authentication. We will be not only validating the Client Certificate, we will also be pulling from the certificate a username from the field specified here, the common name field. What that will be doing is requiring the key server to pull the username from the common name field and verify that a local user on Key Secure exists by the same name. Any key that is generated by the client, or in this case the tape library, will be owned by this user and their for this not only provides user authentication, but it also provides key ownership. And you can also see here I have assigned the default trusted CA list as the profile for the key server. So it will be trusting any certificate signed by that root CA. So the last step in the configuration of Key Secure was to create a local user for the tape library. So on the security tab, local authentication. You can see I have a user called MSL4048 uh, with a password. So this must be the value that is put in the common name field of the certificate that we will generate on the tape library. So MSL4048. So that's the configuration of Key Secure. And now let's go to configuring the key managers on the tape library. So here on the user interface for the tape library, when you first log in, what you want to do is go to configuration and do verify that you have the proper license for KMIP encryption. Then go to the security tab and it is going to be asking for the KMIP security password. So you must know that before you can proceed. Okay, here it is giving you the option to change the password. We're not going to do that. Here it wants the name of the user. So this will be the MSL4048, and you do need to enter the password and verify it, and click Submit. And at that point, it is saving the information. And here, if you're doing a fresh install, you will not see the certificate here. So what you will want to do is click Generate Certificate Request. And you'll notice that it says it can take up to 15 minutes. It takes about three or four from what I've been able to determine, but I'm going to click OK, and then I will pause the video. And after about four minutes, we have come back with the certificate request. And in the process of generating the certificate request, it also generated a private key, which is what was so processing intensive. So if you expand this field, the entire certificate request will be displayed. You're going to want to copy it from the end dash to the beginning dash. And what we're going to do is 
copy this and take the certificate request up to Key Secure and have it signed by the local CA. So on the Security tab, Local CAs, and make sure the correct CA is selected and click Sign Request. Mark it as Client, and per your security policy, set the validity period and then paste in the request and click Sign Request. And here is the signed certificate. And you can see that the common name is set to MSL 4048, which is what we need. And then very carefully copy the certificate. And you want to make sure you get only from dash to dash. There we go. Click Copy. And come back here and scroll down. And in the Sign Certificate field, delete this out and then paste. And now click Upload. It says, are you sure? Click OK. And now apply new certificate settings. The last step in the integration process is to configure the IP addresses of Key Secure or multiple Key Secures in your configuration. So just enter the IP address. The port is whatever the key server port was on Key Secure. In our case, we use 5696, the standard KMIP default. So that's okay as it is. And I'm going to click Submit to commit it to the database and click OK. And the last step is to test server connectivity. Before I do that, I'm going to come here on the Device tab, Activity Log. You can see the log file is empty. There has been no communication with Key Secure yet from the tape library. I'm going to click Test Server Connectivity. And it's going to go into a pending state for a couple of seconds. And then it should come back with the results of its connectivity check. And what it has done is it is it has established a TLS session with Key Secure, and it has authenticated itself with its username. And you can see everything passed. And if I come up here to Log Viewer and click Display Log, you can see we have two messages, Discover Versions and Query from MSL 4048, indicating everything was successful. And if you need to test connectivity in the future, you can just clear the diagnostic results and then use the test server connectivity again. And again, it will send up messages and attempt to establish a TLS session. And when it is successful, we should see two more messages exactly like the first two. And there you can see it was successful and it came back OK. So at this point, with the key managers configured, you can enable encryption. And from this point forward, your uh, tape drives will be encrypted and using keys stored on KeySecure. So I hope this has helped. If you have any trouble, feel free to contact SafeNet AT customer support for an integration guide or consult HPE documentation. Thanks for watching.